Gina DeLuca here. All right, so today I'm continuing with my uh, my journey of flowers. I keep coming up with new kinds of flowers. Uh, each one's different. Is it based on reality? Nah, doesn't need to be. Uh, <laughs> but uh, today I am using two of the Fluid Art Company uh, their brand new line called Stuck Up Pigs. These are chameleon paints or pigments. So this one's called Pretentious and it is multicolored and it's really, really hard to show you. Um, I did just do a painting with that and I'm going to show you some of the dried paintings that I've been doing with all of these interference, um, uh, pigments and the chameleons. I've kind of been calling them ghost flowers because they just have this tendency to, um, you know, the, the interference looks really cool, but here they are. Okay, so this was the first one that I did. And this had some of the prism pour in it. Lots of interference paints. Very pretty. And this was the next one and uh so this one i i tried it the first time i didn't like the way it turned out so i just kind of blended all those colors together so i lost some of my contrast um but it's still pretty i mean it's just this background color would have been um not metallic but because i blended them all together they were but as you can see still really pretty and then this one came out amazing someone placed a wager <laughs> and decided to uh purchase it while it was wet and boy did they wager wisely so i don't know if i can get you to see it the center part is the chameleon and it's like purple and blue and green depending on how you are viewing it and once these are varnished all of those interference paints all of the metallics are going to just jump off that canvas As you can see there's that chameleon in the petals as well Yeah, really gorgeous. Um, yeah, so that's what we're doing today. So that was pretentious. That was in the center of that last one. I'm going to be adding boastful, which is more of a blue and green color. Uh, so hard to get it to show up on camera. In person, it's absolutely amazing. And when you first mix it in, that the green in this, it's it's like, I don't know if you know those really bright green bugs, they're almost a fluorescent green, but they're metallic. Um, they have like a metallic green. It looks like that. The, it's just so, so pretty. So that's what we're working with. Uh, for that, these other colors, I these are leftovers. Um, here's something that I want to note. Yes, pigments are expensive. We know that. Um, these chameleons are like super, super expensive. These are about, I think it's $12.97 per gram. But there was uh, just a little bit in this bag and... I should be able to get about six paintings out of that bag doing this. If you want to use it for pouring, knock yourself out, but it's going to, it's going to put a whopping on, you know, on your, on your purse string. So, um, there are ways to use it that are more cost effective like this. So you can get a lot of bang for your buck with just a little bit of that pigment. And so, you know, when I've mixed up these, these pigments for my 
pours. I'm only intending to use it for one pour, but I wind up having enough to do a few. Um, so I have a lot of leftover pigments here. I'm gonna try to remember what everything is. <laughs> this is uh, a mixture of Liquitex Basics, Mars Black, and Thalo Blue. Um, there was a touch of Thalo Green and a touch of Titanium White. So this is two leftover base coats, basically, that I've mixed together that kind of make, uh, it's kind of like in between Payne's Gray. Yeah, it's kind of a Payne's Gray with a bit more blue to it. Um, my edge is just covered in Payne's Gray because these were already mixed with pouring medium. Uh, I wanted better coverage on the side, so I just picked something that was close. This is this little piggy, Blue Eyes and White Haven mixed together. Just a very pale, icy blue. This is Color Art Bling It in Interference Green. Oh dear. Ooh. <laughs> Good thing that these cups are almost empty. This is the Color Art Bling It uh, Interference Gold. And the Color Art Bling It Interference Red. And, you know, in these cups, they just look white because you're mostly just seeing the pouring medium. But once it dries, you really get to see that flash from the interference. And these look much better when they dry. I mean, they're beautiful when they're wet, but when they dry, the interference really shows up. Um, so basically, these are mixed. It's just pigment and mixed pouring medium. Uh, I put a bit of mixed pouring medium in my cup. I add the pigment, I mix it together, and then I add more mixed pouring medium. That's all I'm doing there. Make sure you wear a mask when you're mixing pigments. Very important. Um, yeah, so the consistency that I have is the consistency of mix. I, I'm not adding anything to it. Uh, it's just whatever that consistency is, that's what we're rolling with. And so I just made sure that my base coat is the same as the other pigments. So I added a tiny bit of water to that just to make sure they were all the same because that was mixed with regular paint and not a powdered pigment. Before we get started, have you seen the Fluid Art Inspiration cards? If you have, you can fast forward about a minute, but if you have not, what we have are 52 cards. There's 42 technique cards, and each technique card has an associated video here on YouTube that gives you all of the information that you need, the exact paint brand, color, consistency, the recipe, and of course the technique, all of the things that I cannot fit on a card. This is the picture of the painting in that video. This box here contains a tip for that particular technique. And here at the bottom, we have the color palette that was used in that painting. And these two boxes can be used together as the basis of a two color palette, or you can build off of those colors. And there are eight bonus color palette cards. Each one has five color palettes. You can use all of the colors or just some of the colors. Mix and match the bonus color palette cards with the technique cards, and you have more combinations than you could ever paint in a lifetime. These are available at my website, ginadeluca.net, and also on amazon.com. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is lay down my base coat. I do want to lay down a nice, uh, thick base coat because I'm going to be blowing this around and I want to make sure that my canvas has nice coverage. I don't want to blow down to the canvas. And the reason that I always cover my edges um, I started doing that when I was doing straight pours because my straight pours are thin and I use Floetrol and Floetrol does not give you the best coverage on the sides when mixed thin. But um, the mixed pouring medium sticks pretty well to the sides. 
However, uh, this canvas, because it's round, um, the canvas is puckered on the sides and it is very easy to, to miss spots. Even if you're covering like this, those little puckers will get slightly less, just a little bit less coverage. And so it'll look a bit more sheer. And this way you have that double protection and your sides are nice and covered. You don't have to worry about that later. That is not a thing you wanna worry about afterwards is having to come back in and touch up the sides, especially if you're mixing custom colors like this is. Trying to get this exact blend uh, again when I'm using four colors in it would be tricky. Uh, I do want to note that there were two people who bid on paintings in the auction that I haven't heard from. So if you have not heard from me, uh, check the email address that you sent your information to, uh, GinaDeLucaArt at gmail.com, so I can get your paintings to you. Uh, everyone else, your paintings will be shipping out on Monday. So thank you. Okay. So first I wanna get that kind of background that, that I get. Um, so I'm going to start with the chameleon uh, called Boastful. So starting with that greenish chameleon and the interference green. More chameleon. Interference gold. My work surface isn't level, so I have to <laughs> move this canvas frequently. A bit of my base color. Keeping in mind here that I need this to stretch all the way out. So I do need enough to make that happen. Repeating the process of boastful interference green, boastful and interference gold. Okay, dot of my base, and then I'm going to Pour a bit of this base around my puddle. I want this to spread out very easily. Okay. So typically I blow this over top and then I blow out and I'm trying to decide if I want to do that because I kind of want as much of that chameleon color to be showing as possible. So I think I'm just going to blow it out. I kind of want some strong striations. 
in there. Okay, this is a bit lopsided. One day I'll have a flat work surface, a level work surface, someday. All right, I'm gonna spin this out. I want this coverage. I mean, this would probably be beautiful as is, as a flower, but that's not what we're doing. So let's spin this out. Okay, so this side is spinning off fairly quickly. I'm gonna scoot this in the direction. So I have the spinner. I have a shower cap on the spinner. I have the cup hooks in the canvas and I have the cup hooks taped to the um, shower cap so I can slide this around <laughs> uh, and not have it fly off but I can still move it around and kind of say, I want more of this to go off. So if I want this side to go off, I want this side to be closer to the edge of the spinner. That way the centrifugal force will pull on that side more. All right, a little bit more. Oh, not that much. I don't want it flinging everywhere. Slow it down, cowpoke. Okay, perfect. Now, now I am going to move in with the pretentious, which is absolutely beautiful. And actually I'm gonna do a dot of this background color, which by the way, as I see this blending and everything, it's gorgeous. Uh, uh, <laughs> I really like this for a background. It's really pretty. Okay, so that's the pretentious. And now I'm going to use the interference, the red interference. The pretentious again. Touch of the background color. And a touch of pretentious. And a dot of the background color. Okay. Whew, here we go. Just going to spread that out a little bit.
Okay, just going to give this a bit of a spin. Not a lot, just a little bit. Oh, actually, let me center this where I need it. Now, I'm going to take my skewer. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my skewer and bring in these petals. Not all the way to the center. Not all the way. just enough to give it that illusion. Having that dark part in the center makes it look like the inner part of the flower. That was a little deep. Let me see if I can fix that. Okay, I am switching to voiceover here because um, I'm not doing much talking because I'm, I'm blowing through a straw. <laughs> uh, if you hear that noise, that's Bigsby purring. Say hi, Bigsby. <laughs> uh, he hears me talking and, uh, you know, he thinks it's for him. So, anywho... Um, what I'm doing is I have this little flexi tube. It's like aquarium tubing, uh, that I got from, you know, your home, home store, Home Depot, I think I got it. And I'm just gently blowing out those edges so I get more of that shape that I'm looking for. I kind of want the petals to not necessarily come to a point, but I don't want them so rounded i want them to have just a little bit of a peak in the petals and blowing it this way actually gives um, a little bit of rippling action on the edges you know which can kind of add to that petally effect like a hibiscus you know kind of has those little ripples I actually do a hibiscus. Uh, I did one um, that will be uh, the video for Sunday, but it won't be during the train, the, my usual train time of 1230 Eastern. It will be, I think, at 330 Eastern. It is the Color Art uh, Fall Splendor event. So I'm using all the Color Art pigments, and I did one that made me think of a hibiscus. So for this one, for the center, I chose to do um, kind of the rosette uh, center. Kind of like those double bloomed hibiscus that uh, have the ones in the center that open later. And I'm just alternating I'm using the chameleon and this is the interference green I think or was that the gold maybe it was the red I've forgotten now it's one of the interference we'll know when it dries so I will show this dry on the next uh, Wednesday should be the, the video where I'll be able to show it dry. Very tight schedule on Sunday, so wouldn't be able to, to add it to that. Sunday will be a 13 minute video. Y'all know that's hard for me. I had to do some serious editing and high speed stuff. But it, it came out pretty cool. Pretty nifty hibiscus. But 
but I wanted to do a rose pattern in the center of this one. I like to mix them up. Are they real flowers? Meh, doesn't matter. It's my world. I get to create my own world on a canvas, and so do you. Doesn't look exactly like a flower you've ever seen before. So what? It's a flower from another planet. So doing these rose centers, if you kind of think in terms of um, a spiral, but just like a broken spiral. Maybe one day I'll have to do like a in-depth how to how to get the center of a rose look. So the, these would be like the, the outer petals kind of spinning off. I don't want any of the areas to look too clumpy. It's supposed to feel like we're looking down on top of a petal. I'm really loving working with these interference paints and these chameleons and, and doing these like ghostly effects. Uh, I, I have so many ideas and I'm, I'm just trying to get a handle on how they work before I start moving bigger. But I got plans. I hope you can hear me over Bigsby's purring. Oh, oh, I said his name. Oh, no. <laughs> he likes being part of the, uh, the fun. So now I'm just trying to tighten up that center to really give it that twirled up petal effect. And of course, this is going to look very different when it's dry because those interference paints are going to jump off of that canvas. The, the darks will be uh, darker. You know, that background color will deepen up. And those interference paints sitting on top of it will just glow. I'm loving how all these pieces have turned out. And I like that it's like a, a surprise. You have to wait for it to dry. I did have a bug crawl through my hibiscus, unfortunately. Uh, so I'll show that one on Wednesday too. And maybe I'll do a video on how to try to fix <laughs> a painting that was destroyed by a very, very tiny little gnat. Okay, here it is. Uh, this is still wet. Uh, unfortunately, you won't be seeing the dry piece today. I'm hoping to get caught up enough that I can start showing you the dried pieces uh, the day that I air, but I have to get caught up before I can get ahead. <laughs> so, eh. But, I mean, it's like from certain angles, you see that's like, Really pretty purple. It changes. But with the direction that you're viewing it. This camera just does not, it's not picking it up. But really I love these chameleon pigments. Oh my goodness. They are so cool. But there's like the rose part of it. Oh, there.
there it is. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. Please do like, share, and subscribe and all that good stuff. Do check out the description box below for links to my PayPal tip jar if you feel so inclined. Oh, oh, I just caught a really pretty glimpse of like the gold interference in there. Um, also in the description box, you will find the link to my website, GinaDeLuca.net, where you can find my art and music and fluid art inspiration cards for sale. And you will find the link to our Facebook group, Go Make Some Art. I'm trying to get you all different angles here to see if it changes what you see. Go make some art. Join us there. Post your masterpieces. Ask your questions. Get some inspiration. A good time is had by most. If you are a subscriber and you're not receiving notifications, please make sure you click that bell so that you do get notified when I put up new content. Uh, is that it? I think that's it. All right. Well, that is it for me for today. I hope y'all have a beautiful day. Now go make some art.